that's a penalty of having to speak last. Mr. Secretary, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, it's already been a success. And I, I guess if Pittsburgh has a little bit of a different story, unlike all these other cities, you know, in my lifetime of 51 years, I've never seen my city grow. Uh, my city has lost population, lost companies, and it's finally starting to come around now. And it's a different city than it was even 30 years ago. So let me go back a little bit. Back in 1921, my grandfather came from a little village with a second grade education. My grandmother had none. And they settled in Pittsburgh because there was an opportunity to work in a global leader in heavy industry. And he spent his life working in the mill, but there were challenges at that time. You know, during World War II, Pittsburgh produced more steel than Germany and Japan combined. But we had water that was poisonous to drink. We had air that was dangerous to breathe. And we had some of the greatest disparity between the haves and the have-nots. And after that period, Pittsburgh went on a mission. We created the first Clean Air Act in this nation's history. We started to work to clean the air. And not only did we build America and every bridge and skyscraper from every city that you're from, but we built the middle class along with cities like Detroit and Cleveland and Buffalo. That went well for a while and we changed our economy. We became and looked to refocus to become a leader in corporate headquarters. And by the 1970s, we had done that. We were the third largest corporate headquarters in the United States, New York, Chicago, Pittsburgh. And we built out a whole new system. No longer was it Andrew Carnegie getting product to market, using our rivers, using our rails and building it. We built highways and roads and we built bridges and tunnels. And we saw our population use those as driveways and leave. And we saw sprawl and decline happen. But the economy was still good until 1979, and the Pirates won the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> Remember We Are Family, Willie Stargell? <laughs> Steelers won their fourth Super Bowl in six years, and Pittsburgh died. We died. I was starting high school, and I remember it very well, watching the kids that I started in ninth grade not be there when we graduated in 83. The entire economy was gone. We had put all our eggs in one basket. And for the city of Pittsburgh, really what it meant was an unemployment rate double what Detroit's is today. More people leaving than left New Orleans after Katrina. And a debt ratio of city government that is still higher than New York's when it went bankrupt. And for the past 30 years, there haven't been any federal programs, there haven't been any opportunities. We just dusted ourselves off and we planted seeds and those seeds have now taken root. And they're coming through areas like Carnegie Mellon University and the University of Pittsburgh. We become the headquarters for Bosch and for Tata, for Intel, Microsoft, Disney, Oculus, for Google and Uber, and we've created this whole new economy and we have this opportunity now. Areas that have lost 80% of their population to rebuild these communities and to be able to do it in four different ways. To look at energy, transportation, technology, and an open platform in order to be able to build out a 21st century city. So what's our mean? It means that we look at new corridors and new areas of development where steel mills once stood. And we see the opportunity to create district energy. Because what good is it to have an electric vehicle if your electricity is produced by a coal burning power plant 100 <coughs> miles away? But what if you could start to create co-generation? And what if you could start to create renewable energy and a district energy plan. And within those same quarters where those roads were built, which were all the low income neighborhoods when they built the highways through them, where the carbon pollution is greater in the lowest income neighborhoods than in the more affluent, you start to create and use sensor detection in order to be able to understand how to make that air quality better, to give people that opportunity to get to work because a new economy is based upon getting people to workplace, not product to market and starting to look at all the different areas of the city as a way to connect through technology and sensor detection, the ways that energy can overlay with transportation. And then using the partnerships that are already in existence in the city of Pittsburgh, an historic MOU with the Department of Energy to create the largest contiguous district energy program in North America. An MOU of first of its kind with Carnegie Mellon University where they're my research and development arm 
and they have an urban lab to expand upon that opportunity through transportation initiatives. In being able to partner with Uber, who has already created over 300 engineering jobs in the city of Pittsburgh and created the Autonomous Vehicle Center for the world in the city that once produced steel, and being able to do it all on an open platform so that it doesn't only benefit Pittsburgh, but it has the ability to benefit the world. 